Before Ali Abdelaziz was the founder and acting president of Dominance MMA Management, representing some of the biggest fighters in the sport, including Habib Nurmagomedov. To see how much you lose at night. Yes. You need to count. You understand? If you don't know how much you lose when you sleep, I always lose one and a half pound. Before Ali racked up a strong social media following, including 26,000 on Twitter, as well as 267,000 on Instagram at the time of this recording. Before Ali found himself caught in the center of Conor McGregor and Habib's war of words, during the promo of the now legendary UFC 229, even getting shade thrown at him by hip hop's reigning king of trolling, talking about 50 Cent. This is not the Conor show anymore. You know, remember, Conor threw the first punch in this whole thing. With the McGregor versus Habib fight being one of the most talked about events in UFC history and its aftermath adding additional publicity, well, every aspect of the showdown has been placed under a microscope. One key person in the mix has been Ali Abdelaziz, Habib's manager. Now, during a New York City press conference a week before the big fight, well, Conor McGregor got to his usual pre-fight trash talk. And with a microphone clenched in his hand, the Irish fighter expressed not only what he thinks of his upcoming opponent, it, but also Ali Abdelaziz. Ali Abdelaziz, my terrorist, terrorist snitch. Ali. I know a lot about you as well, you my rock. I know a lot about you as well. Some see Ali as someone who has a checkered past who did work for America spying on dangerous terrorists, but others see him as a terrorist snitch who may have been a double agent. And Connor shined the spotlight on Ali's past, referencing his whereabouts on September 11, 2001 as well as supposed possession of five different passports. While these allegations have been documented in the past, the world is now looking a little closer into the backstory of one of the MMA's biggest managers. <sighs> this is a very controversial video. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCrudden documenting the life and career of Ali Abdelaziz, here for you of course and before they are famous. Now for this profile, we're gonna be doing things a little differently due to some of the, uh, well, troublesome speculation in regards to Ali's past, as well as his alleged ties to terrorist organizations. Well, we've picked our info very carefully. Now we wanna be as fair as possible as this is a developing story and many sources reporting on his past, they may or may not be accurate. We've done our best to gather as much information as we can, being as there's no distinct timeline in the details, well, they're scattered all over the place. Essentially what I'm saying is don't shoot the messenger. Whew, that was a long take. Now we recently did a video on Habib's Before Their Fame and his rich life. There will be links to those at the end of this video. How about a Before They Are Famous on Connor's coach, John Kavanaugh? Huh? Let me know if you wanna see that in the comments down below. Finally, let's get into Ali Abdelaziz. <sighs> Ooh, I'm scared even doing this. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Ali Ibrahim Abdelaziz was reportedly born on December 4th, 1977 in Cairo, Egypt. While information on his early years in Egypt are scarce, according to an article off the Dominance website, well, Ali hails from a family with deep roots in martial arts. Now, many of his family members are judo champions, and as you can imagine, well, Ali began training at the age of just six years old. Now, because his family was unable to fund his training, well, his coach decided to train young Ali for free out of generosity. And Ali, he took his training very seriously, so much so that at the age of 10, well, he won the junior nationals in Egypt. Huyaja! Is that even judo? Ali did not stop this train from rolling. He remained dedicated to judo, so much so that by the age of 17, well, he had competed in five national championships as well as four victories in the African Pan Am Games. In 1996, at the age of 18, well, Ali made his way to the United States where he lived in Colorado Springs, Colorado for a period of time. And it was here that he practiced his fighting style at the US Olympic Training Center. Not long after, he was introduced to trainers Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn. And the two men, well, they introduced him to MMA, which he seemingly fell in love with, and considering the fact that he immersed himself in it from there on out, mastering Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He traveled around, he even competed in Japan. I love watching the, uh, the Japanese compete, they bring a lot of heart to the table. Yeah, we should see it. Uh, the grip fighting is, in judo, one of the most important things that's happened. They're gonna be looking for a throw right away. His fight records show that he competed in seven matches during his MMA career, and during his amateur years, he won three of four fights, and only one of the three during his professional years. In 2007, Ali decided to change things up and began representing fighters who wanted to get into the next level of MMA. 
It's out of this that Dominance MMA Management came to be, an organization based out of New York City currently representing not only Habib, but Frankie Edgar, Renzo Gracie, and Anthony Rumble Johnson. To flip the script a little bit, while Ali had a prolific career in MMA, a different story is told in the book Enemies Within. Inside the NYPD's secret spying unit and Bin Laden's final plot against America. The book written by Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Adam Goldman and Matt Apuzo. Now this centers around post 9-11 counterterrorism efforts and mentions a 25 year old MMA fighter named Ali Abdelaziz. He was recruited out of prison to assist with such efforts. And by the sounds of things, well it appears that Conor McGregor, he may or may not have read this book. He was pulled off of a flight going from Cairo, Egypt to New York City on September 11, 2001. He was caught with five passports in his possession. He turned informant and turned on the people that he was working with. He is a f I don't even know how that man is in this f***ing country. It's almost as if Ali lived a completely separate life from the one he led in martial arts. MMA journalist Mike Russell, one of Ali's biggest critics in this matter, well he's been investigating his criminal history. In March of 2018, he took to Twitter stating, Just got Ali Abdelaziz rap sheet from 2000 to 2004. No way NSAC did an FBI fingerprint check on him. Charges include counterfeiting, forgery, criminal impersonation, checking credit card fraud, assault, felony times two, aggravated times one, simple times two, burglary, auto theft, fraud, and harassment. Mike Russell also claims to have disproved Ali's involvement in the 1996 Olympics, stating that this was a story he simply told in order to move to the United States. It's also been reported that during his training, he became involved in the Muslims of America, which is a Virginia-based organization currently listed as a terrorist group by the US State Department. And it suggests that Ali, well, he came in contact with the group doing petty crimes, such as the ones he was charged with. Now, while it has been confirmed that Ali was charged with forgery, as well as other types of fraud, information on the exact timeline is unclear. According to an excerpt from the book, while well, Ali was serving a sentence in a Colorado jail when law enforcement recruited him to supply information on the Muslims of America. The book states that not only did Ali accept their offer to avoid prison, the United States gave him a special green card, which allowed him to enter and leave the United States, listed as Confidential Informant 184. He apparently worked in foreign countries, including Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Venezuela. The book went on to detail that in 2008, Ali underwent a polygraph machine test, where he's asked a bunch of questions in regarding his experience with the organization and any information he extracted. He was dismissed as an informant after failing this test, and this resulted in a botched attempt to deport him back to Egypt. You should never take information from an informant. You should keep <laughs> distance from the informant at all times. Now Ali seemingly moved on from this stage in his life and turned back to mixed martial arts as well as having a family of four. Now during Connor's rant, he mentioned someone named Noah, which left many curious as to who he was talking about. Well Mike Russell, he took to Twitter to say, FYI Noah is the son of Ali abandoned in Colorado when he started as an informant for the NYPD and who he is $50,000 behind in child support for. Conor McGregor does his homework when preparing for war. Before the press conference where McGregor spilled these alleged details, well Ali was asked by reporters if he was anticipating this very thing. According to an article in the Washington Post, well Ali responded, I don't care, he can tell me anything, I don't give an F. It doesn't offend me one effing bit. Because at the end of the day, he's not fighting me, he's fighting Habib. This other guy make a lot of money, Habib have a lot of money? And now he's talking about rematch and stuff like that. Did he we, use purse? That's what we want to know too. He's gonna be fine. After the conference, Ali took to Twitter and simply posted a tweet displaying laughing emojis. The drama continued to unfold after the chaotic match, with insults practically being hurdled. Upon hearing Connor's request for a rematch, well, Ali had some strong words for both he and his coach Kavanaugh. He's talking about a rematch, but he quit. He's a bitch. I said before that he is a prostitute, and I still think that he is a prostitute. I haven't changed my mind, he's a bitch. But it's business. Whatever gets Habib money, I will do. Whatever Habib wants, I will do. I'll do what in my ability to get it done. Kavanaugh is garbage. I don't give a f about him. If I'm inside an arena under regulations, I'm gonna respect the rules. But outside the arena, there are no rules for me. But if you think you're gonna talk crazy and make fun of my religion, I'ma catch you outside. A lot of things were said about me that were not right. Did he just say what I think he said? Catch me outside, how about that? As for the rest of the story, 
Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see as this story continues to unfold. But for now, well, that's all we got because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael Cretton and we do videos on all sorts of celebrities here on this channel. Obviously, Habib was a big hit for us, but you guys got to let us know who's next in the comments down below. I'm thinking John Cavanaugh. You know, good old Irish guy. He's Irish, right? He's got to be. Yeah, of course. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to check out our other videos here that are suggested. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Boom! Habib said Ali would choke you out. What do you think about that? Lovely. Get the fight promo started. A snitch versus an Irish proper animal. So let's go.